2023 was more than a success for K-pop. A record high album sales, K-pop stars sweeping global music charts, and brand new girl groups. Will 2024 be another hit? We're joined by Bernie Cho this morning. Welcome to the program and Happy New Year. Well, Happy New Year to you too. Bernie, I'd like to touch upon how much K-pop has achieved, achieved last year. Now, South Korea's album exports from January to November last year came to over $267 million. That's a record high. What's behind these massive sales? Um, it's just two words, CDs, or mm -hmm. actually two letters, CDs. Physical album sales is what really drove exports. And if we break down the numbers, I mean, we're talking about 20.3% year-on-year growth. I don't care what format is, that is phenomenal. To do double digits, let alone 20% plus, is absolutely amazing. And if we break down the numbers a little bit deeper and uh, dive further, uh, we look at the top three markets. Japan has historically, traditionally always been number one. But what was a real surprise was the number two export market now for K-pop albums is the U.S. In fact, we saw a 67.3% year-on-year growth in the U.S. market. And the number three was China, which unfortunately we saw a 51.1% decrease. Um, if we look at who was driving most of the sales, it was the usual suspects. It was BTS, but the solo efforts, Jimin and Jungkook absolutely crushed it on the Billboard charts. And we saw other high label mates such as TXT and New Jeans also crushed it on the Billboard charts, particularly in the U.S. And JYP Stray Kids had a phenomenal year. And so... Um, when we looked at the first half of the best-selling CDs in the U.S. for the first half of 2023, nine out of the top ten best-selling CDs in the United States were K-pop albums. Taylor Swift, who was the person, not just entertainer, artist, the person of the year for Time Magazine, he was the only U.S. artist among the top ten best-selling CDs here in the U.S. Wow, those are some impressive figures from coming out of K-pop. Now, what's also noticeable about K-pop scene last year is that K-pop groups from medium-sized entertainment agencies like 5050, I have to mention, they proved themselves just as talented and popular as the ones from the three major agencies like SM and uh, JYP. Is this something we'll see more this year? What do you think? Uh, you know, it's hard to say, but I think, unfortunately, no. I think 50-50 could have, should have been a feel-good Cinderella story, but it ended the year, ended up being a very complex, convoluted, just frankly, Cruella case study on how to torpedo a smack hit. Um, and so I think that the 50-50 Cupid success was unfortunately a bit of an anomaly. But that being said, I do think that we will start seeing success from beyond boy bands and beyond girl bands from the Fab Four. Hybe, JYP, SM, and YG. I think we'll likely start seeing some of the spin-off agencies from some of these artists who've decided to go solo and independent. Uh, namely, Jenny from Blackpink has decided to set up her own shop, and from EXO, Peckyon has also decided to set up his own solo agency with some of his fellow artists. So I think if we do see more chart success from different companies, I think we'll see some familiar faces uh, under new circumstances. Right, I'm sure for many K-pop fans, including myself, the more the merrier. Oh, for sure, yeah. But I cannot but point out the absence of our beloved K-pop boy group, BTS, Bernie. All seven members are now doing their military service. Is their absence going to be a big blow to the K-pop industry? What do you think? A few years ago, and honestly, it feels like it was just yesterday, um, when, you know, there was a raging debate as to whether BTS was going to go or not go to the army. Uh, it turns out they had to go and the word hiatus got rid of the uh, quotation marks. They are on hiatus. But although there were a lot of doubters saying that, you know, by BTS going to the military and going to the army, that the, not just the company or the band, but the industry would see a hiccup or, or, or a slide. It turns out, um, the market just kept getting bigger and, and arguably better. We started seeing the BTS solo efforts um, actually start becoming the best-selling solo projects and solo albums. Um, and by default, they became the best-selling solo artists uh, for, you know, while they were supposedly on time off. And, you know, it's hard to believe, but uh, one of the first members to go into the military, BTS's Jin, is actually coming out and coming back in June. And he's already announced that as soon as he gets out, he's going to drop a new album. And so... Although it might feel like all of them are going to be in the military, the reality is that as soon as the remaining members step in, next thing you know, in just a blink um, and in just the bat of the eye, uh, members are going to start coming out.
Definitely. Before I let you go, Bernie, is there a trend or style in K-pop that we should be following this year, particularly? Well, I think because of limited time, I'm going to just focus on two big trends that I see for 2024. Number one is non-Korean K-pop. Um, uh -huh. A lot of the efforts that we started seeing late in the year is going to start uh, start um, going on stage and, and going global. Number one is the girl band project from JYP and Republic Records, uh, Vicha is going to debut any day now. And again, many of the members, most of the members are not Korean. Five and Geffen Records, their new girl band, vis-a-vis -vis also through an audition show called Cats, uh, that band of Cats Eye is also going to debut in 2024. And SM Entertainment and Moon and Back in the UK are going to be putting together an audition show looking for a new boy band. So this idea of non-Korean K-pop trained boy bands and girl bands are something to look forward and look forward to in 2024. And last but not least, even though everyone knows it's going to be the year of the dragon, I really believe it's going to be really year of the G-Dragon uh, because uh, many people have been waiting for his comeback. He's already announced that he's going to be coming out with new music. And, you know, whatever G-Dragon does, whether it's in music, whether it's in fashion, whether it's in art, whether it's in design, it's always going to be a hit. And so I think for a lot of people in the industry, not just in Korea, not just in Asia worldwide, are really looking forward to see what G-Dragon uh, is going to drop in 2024. Right, so a lot to come to keep ourselves entertained for the year. All right, Bernie, thanks so much for joining us uh, this morning and enjoy your afternoon there. Thank you. Have a good day.